Hello everyone, my name is Javier Berbel and I'm going to present our paper called MRDSS Smaller Mini Rank Based Ring Signatures. This is joint work with Emanuele Bellini, Andre Esser, and Carlos Sana. This paper is going to be presented at the PQ Crypto Conference. A full version of this paper can be found on ePrint with the link shown below. We require digital signatures in order to provide authenticity for digital communication. We want them to be quantum secure, meaning that we want them to be secure against classical and quantum adversaries. So far, three schemes have been selected by NIST for standardization. Two of them are Diligent and Farcom that are based on structured lattices. The third one is a Finx Plus, which is a hash-based scheme. Besides of this, we still demand to diversify our portfolio of digital signatures. That's why NIST opened a new call for proposals in order to standardize more schemes. On the other hand, the mini rank problem has been around in cryptography for quite some time, mainly in the cryptanalysis of multivariate based and code based cryptography. It is simple and easy to describe, but besides of this, very, a very a limited amount of proposals are based on this problem. In this paper, we propose a new post-quantum signature scheme based on the harness of the mini rank problem called MRDSS. This is not the first work of a digital signature based on mini rank. In, 2000, in 2001, Courtois proposed the first digital signatures based on mini rank. He proposes a zero knowledge protocol with soundness 2 over 3, and then he applied the Fiat Shamir transformation in order to get the signature scheme. He also shows how this digital signature turns naturally into a ring signature scheme. MRDSS is built over a Courtois scheme, but in this case, we apply the Sigma protocol with the helper, and then we apply Fiat Shamir to get the signatures. This allows us to improve the soundness error from 2 over 3 to 1 half. And because of this, we also get smaller signature size and polykey sizes. There's a current work by Santoso, Ikematsu, Namura, and Yashuda. They use a different approach and they also achieve a sonar error of 1 half. In this talk, I'm going to start by giving some preliminaries on the mini rank problem, zero knowledge protocol with helper, and the fiat shami transformation to get digital signatures. Then I'm going to show our zero knowledge protocol with helper based on the mini rank problem and how can we use it to build our digital signatures and mark DSS. Finally, I'm going to give our choice of parameters and the algorithm we consider in order to choose our parameters. In the mini rank problem, we are given an integer r and a set of matrices m0 to mn. And what we want to do is to find a linear combination of the matrices with rank smaller or equal than r. This problem is proven to be MP complete and it also is hard for random instances. As you can see, this problem is very simple to describe and it's based only on linear algebra computation. It appears in cryptography in the cryptanalysis of important schemes like Rainbow, Gems, and Rollo. And it's also believed to be quantum secure, meaning that there are no quantum algorithms improving the efficiency on how we solve this problem. A Sigma protocol with helper is a protocol run by two entities, one called the prover and the second one called the verifier. The prover holds two values, one public value X and one secret value W, while the verifier only knows the public value X. The goal of the protocol is that the prover is able to prove the knowledge of the private value W such that X and W belongs to a set of relations. To this end, they use the helper, which is a third party trusted by the prover and the verifier that will run and produce all the necessary information 
so the so the prover can prove the knowledge of the of his secret value. In the protocol, the helper sample a random seed, and then he uses it inside a function setup to produce the auxiliary information that will be used in the actual protocol. He sends the seed to the prover and the auxiliary information to the verifier. Now, in the protocol, the prover uses the seed and his private value W to commit to produce a first commitment. Then the verifier sample a challenge uh, from a set of challenges C. Finally, the prover uh, make a response and the verifier uses all the information provided in the protocol to decide if it accept or reject the prover. Where accept means that the verifier believe that the prover actually hold the secret value W. We want our Sigma protocol with helper to satisfy the following properties. We said that protocol is correct if a prover holding W is always accepted. We said our protocol is too special sound if a witness W can be efficiently extracted from two valid transcripts that share the same auxiliary information and the first commitment come. But they have two different challenges and two different responses. Our protocol is honest verifier zero knowledge if there exists a simulator S that only knows the public information X, but it can produce transcripts that are indistinguishable from the ones produced by the prover that actually knows the value W. We said the protocol has soundness error P if for any efficient adversary A that only knows the public information passes the protocol with probability less than P plus a negligible function in the security parameter. So in reality, there's no such an entity as the helper. So we use the cut and choose strategy in order to simulate the job of the helper. In this strategy, the prover start by choosing a set of seeds and for each of them, he produces the auxiliary information. Then he also produces a commitment as in a similar protocol with the helper. He will send these commitments and auxiliary information to the verifier. Now the verifier will sample a set of indices from one to S of size tau. For each element of this set, he will, ask, he will choose a challenge and he will send it to the, to the prover. Then the prover will produce a response for each of, the challenge, of these challenges and for every element that is not denied, he will reveal the seed that he uses to produce the auxiliary information. After this, the verifier will check that for every element that is not an I, the auxiliary information was properly constructed. And for the elements in I, he will check that the transcript is actually valid. If all these transcripts are valid, then the verifier will accept. Now, this Sigma protocol without the helper can be turned into a, ring, into a signature scheme by using the so-called Fiat-Shamir transformation. In this transformation, the prover will simulate the verifier in the following way. So he will start by computing the challenge, the, sorry, he will start by computing the commitment as in a regular protocol, but now the challenge is no longer sent by the verifier, but it's computed by the prover as the image on their, half, on their hash function of the concatenation of the commitment and the message. Then the, prover, then the prover will produce a response for this challenge and then this, a signature for the a message will be the set of transcripts of this simulated protocol. Now we describe how our zero knowledge protocol with helper for the mini rank problem works. In our protocol, the public information is given by the set of k plus 1 matrices m0 up to mk, while the secret information is given by a matrix E and a vector alpha, and the relation between these two uh, public and private information is given by this equation. Basically, E 
can be written as a linear combination of the matrices M with coefficients in alpha, and the rank of E is less or equal than R. Our protocol is based on the following equation, which holds for every matrix T, S, and vector beta. So basically, this relation can be derived from the definition of E in two steps. So first, we add and subtract a linear combination of the matrices MIs with the coefficients in beta. And then we multiply the whole equation on the left by the matrix T and on the right by the matrix S. In our protocol, the helper sample a seed and uses a zero random generator to produce the vector beta and the matrices S and T. Then he commits to the matrices S and T, and we denote this commitment as COM0. Now he produces a commitment COM1, which is a commitment to the multiplication between T and 1 and S. Then he sends the seed to the prover and these two commitments to the verifier. Now the prover commits to the multiplication of T and 2 and S, where you can see that to build N2, the prover has to use the solution to the mini rank problem. Then he sends this commitment to the verifier. Now the verifier sample a challenge between 0 and 1 and send it to the prover. To the prover. Now, if the challenge is 1, the prover will produce a response that consists of two matrices. The matrix T N1 and S and the matrix T N2 times S. And we send it to the verifier. But if the challenge is equal to 1, then the prover will send the matrices S and T that he uses to compute N1 and he will send a mask of the secret which is given by alpha plus beta. Now the verifier, if the challenge that he sent was equal to 1, will verify that the commitment of R1 consists, of the, consists with the commitment sent by the helper. And also he will check that the difference between R2 and R1 has rank less or equal than R. But if the challenge is equal to 1, the verifier will, will recompute N2 from the second coordinate of the response and he will extract T and S from the first coordinate. And he will check that a commitment of R1 is equal to COM0 and the first commitment sent by the prover is equal to the commitment of T times N2 times S. As we said before, our MRDS signature scheme is built by first removing the helper by using the cut and choose strategy and then apply to our protocol without the helper the fiat chamber transformation. In our signature scheme, the public key is given by the set of matrices, while the secret key is given by a lower rank matrix A and a vector alpha, where the matrix M0 can be written as a linear combination of the matrices MI plus the lower rank matrix. In our protocol, we suggested a couple of optimization to improve the public key size and improve a little bit the size of the signature. For the first improvement, we force k coordinates of M0 to be equal to zero. So this allows to reduce the size of the public key from n times n times the log of q to the log of q multiplied by n times n minus k. And to reduce a bit the size of this of the signature, we modify our protocol so that instead of sending the two matrices TN1S and TN2S, we will send TN1S and the difference between these two because it is cheaper to send a matrix of rank R than a, a full matrix. So they will provide an improvement for small values of R. Now I'm going to describe how ring signature work. 
But first, let me give some basic definitions about ring signatures. A ring with U users is just a set of public keys with U elements. A member of a ring is just a holder of a secret key which corresponds to one of the public keys inside the ring. Any member of a ring can sign a given message. And anyone with the ring can verify that signature. And it will have the guarantee that someone inside the ring was the actual signer. But still, the actual identity of the signer remains secret within the ring. We call this property anonymity. To define our ring signature, we first choose a random a set of matrices M0 to Mk. Our public key is defined by the matrix Rj, while our secret key is going to be a vector such that the vector 1 alpha is a solution to the mini rank problem defined by the matrices Rj and the matrices in M. In our case, a ring is formed by the tuple of U matrices that are, of course, public keys. And to sign a message on behalf of the ring, we have to prove we know a solution to the mini rank problem defined by the matrices in R and the matrices in M. We can see that if you are the holder of the solution to the mini rank problem defined by Rj and the matrices M, you can easily build a solution to the mini rank problem defined by the matrices in M and the matrices in the ring. The only thing that you have to do is concatenate on the right the J canonical vector. And then you can see that this new vector after the concatenation is a solution to the mini rank problem defined by M and R. Since our protocol is zero knowledge, then the, remind, the identity of, this, of the signer remains secret because you don't have information about what was the solution to the mini rank problem, so you don't know what was the actual canonical vector that was concatenated on the right in order to build the solution. Now I'm going to show the algorithms and strategies we took into consideration while choosing the parameters for our scheme. Remember that here, alpha denotes a solution to the mini rank problem with matrices M0 to Mk and rank R. And the matrix E is just the low rank matrix that solves the problem. So we basically consider two algorithms while choosing our parameters. We consider the kernel search, which is a combinatorial method to solve the mini rank problem, and the support minus method which is an algebraic method to solve the mini rank problem. We also consider the hybrid approach defined in this paper, BBJT22, that basically said that we can guess some linear variables, but that we, also can, can, we also can guess some of the kernel vectors in E, and then the complexity to solve one full mini rank problem with K matrices of size m times n and rank r can be reduced to solve an exponential amount of many rank problems that are smaller. They have instead of n columns, they have m minus a, and instead of k matrices, we have k minus a times m minus l. We also have to be careful that because the number of matrices have a bound. We have to choose the number of matrices in such a way that they are less than n minus r times n minus r. We do this in order to guarantee the uniqueness of the solution alpha. And we also have to use our parameter in such a way that the quantity shown below is big enough in order to avoid the polynomial time attack called big M by Courtois in 2021. For our scheme, we propose three set of parameters in order to achieve security on the category 1, 3, and 5. For all of them, we choose a field with 16 elements and we define our mini rank problem to have square matrices. So the column MN denotes the dimension of these matrices. The column K and R denotes the number of matrices we are 
using and the rank defining the mini rank program. The column alg uh, showed the, the best algorithm to solve the instance defined by the chosen parameters. Well, I have to remember here we are using the hybrid strategy shown in the previous slide. For the first set of parameters, we give a bit complexity of 158. And for the second, for category three, we give a 231 bits of security. Well, for category five, we achieve 295. For these parameters, we are able to achieve the following signature size and public key size. As you can see, for all the three categories, our signature size is about half of the signature size of core to asset scheme that is computed for the parameters proposed in the previous, proposed in the previous table. We also have some achievement in the public key. As you can see, our public key is about half of the public key of Courtois scheme. We also propose parameters for our range signature. And in the following table, you can see how the signature size of all proposals compares with other proposals for range signatures for a moderate amount of users. We can see that the signature size of our proposal is somehow similar to a proposal based on a structured lattice. In addition, our proposal is based in random instance of, not the structure, of a non-structured problem. Calamari and LESS provide both less signature size than our proposal, but in favor of our proposal, we believe that the main rank problem offers more strong guarantees in terms of quantum security that it will provide the seaside problem. And also the mini rank problem is being more studied and the, the complexity of the problem is more understood than the new problem, uh, the code equivalence problem. In summary, in this work, we propose MRDSS, which is a signature scheme based on the harness of the mineral rank problem. It is, based, it is built from a three pass zero knowledge protocol and then the FHMA transformation is applied in order to get the signature scheme. The zero knowledge protocol has an error one over two and the signature size of our proposal it is smaller by a factor of two in comparison with Courtois scheme. We believe our scheme is quantum secure and it seems to be an interesting alternative for ring signatures. As a future work, it would be nice to design zero knowledge protocols based on the mini rank problem with smaller soundness. And also it would be interesting to build trapdoor mini rank based signature schemes. Thank you very much for your attention.